Hello, everyone. Good to see you. So this could be our penultimate supper. Uh, next week is the we, we see the Fatiha, inshallah. And that will then conclude the entire section of 114 chapters that we've been looking at. So um, Aisha, could you lead us in Fatiha for this, please? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malik yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina sirat al-Mustaqim. Sirat al-Ladhin an'amta alayhim. خير المخطوب عليهم ولا طالين. آمين. آمين. Okay, let's see if I can get the screen up for you next. Um, okay. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. To God belongs all that is in the heavens and in the earth. We have charged those who were given the book before you. And you fear God if you disbelieve. To God belongs all that is in the heavens and in the earth. God is all sufficient, all laudable. To God belongs all that is in the heavens and in the earth. God suffices for a guardian. If he will, he can put you away, O men, and bring others. Surely God is powerful over that. Whoso denies the reward of this world, with God is the reward, is the reward of this world. And of the world to come, God is all hearing, all seeing. Yeah, thank you. Good. And Salah will come on now, inshallah. I'm not sure if he's having any difficulties. Salah, are you able to, to join right now? I think he's having internet issues in Yemen. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll we'll just go straight in and until he can join us. Okay. So this is the poem that uh, begins the the chapter here, the women, and the chapter uh, that Ibn Arabi writes. So Klaus, if you could. The soothing of the eye is simply a soothing of the soul. Look to every meaning buried in sensory objects. You will find who my mountains of Paul. If you are someone observant of the detail and the variety and the kind in all their properties, my eye witnesses only who, ever, while the people are in doubt and confusion about all of this. Perfume and women, most goodly, share with the intimate conversation of the prayer in meaning and in soul. So in the prayer is my very being, and women are for us, men, a throne of Al-Rahman. And in perfume, breaths of Al-Rahman, breaths of my beautiful beloved. Okay, thank you. So we're looking at made beloved to me. So in the place where this surah is revealed, Ibn Arabi leads us to find the place where it says made beloved to me, this the idea there. And taqwa is something that will come up here. We've seen in the verse and taqwa is the God awareness or mindfulness of God, uh, fearful all of God. And we are taught that if we have this mindfulness of God, uh, this all of God, then God will teach us. So, that, that 
so be mindful of God, be fearfully all in all of God, and God will teach you. So messenger of God said, made beloved to me from your world are three women and perfume and a soothing of my eyes was made for me in the prayer. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, indeed, your Lord is one and indeed your parent is one. So there is no excellence of an Arab over an Ajam, nor an Ajam over an Arab. There is only excellence by taqwa. So this is Ibn Arabi's way of telling us the only excellence we have is by knowledge. So taqwa, which gives us knowledge. Then he recited, indeed, the most generously noble of you for God are you with the most taqwa. He means by the one parent, Adam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is his word. He created all of you from a single soul, meaning the soul of Adam. He's addressing all the branches descending from him. So this is the, uh, the, the process of getting close to Allah, the process when God loves us. And so we have that hadith, whoever treats a friend of mine as an enemy, on him I declare war. My servant draws near to be my nothing dearer to me than that which I have established as a duty for him. So, and this is where we also looked at this same hadith for wavering and flickering, but this is the way, so wavering and flickering is also the divine quality that we have. And that's the one that brings us close till when we are loved. And resolve that you do not interpose anything into your actions and resolve that there will be nothing which is merely made permissible for you to have emerge in your states. So he's talking particularly about the Hajj here, um, but this is a general counsel for us to follow uh, meticulously and emulate the Prophet Sallallahu and here, adhere as closely as you can to the protocol, protocols of his Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do not leave out anything, anything which comes to you which you are able to perform. Indeed, God tasks you only within your capacity. <clears throat> so apply yourself abundantly and do not leave anything out. You see, the end result of this will be tremendous, her measure immeasurable. She is God's love for you. And you surely know the property of love in the one who loves. So the way that <clears throat> we become the beloved, where, the way the beloved becomes the one who loves, this is a tremendous result of this careful adherence to the protocols of the Prophet Now, remembering in traces and tracks, so we have to look and see in these traces and tracks of our lives and in our bodies and in and around us, we are to look for this these truths. So, uh, Surah the Nisa, uh, there's many verses about inheritance. And so inheritance is a theme also when you dive into this area, that inheritance is what when someone passes, they give you their inheritance. And what the prophets, when they pass away, they give you knowledge. So they don't give dinar, they give knowledge. <clears throat> and so uh, we, this is the bringing out the inheritance of knowledge and what it is. And this inheritance is the made beloved to me. Ibn Arabi will tell us that that is an inherited knowledge, that if you know and what it means for the Prophet ﷺ to say made beloved to me, then you have inherited that. As for the meaning-based inheritor, this is anything which is connected to the inward properties, including the purification of the soul from the blameworthy characteristics and her beautification by means of the generous virtues and whatever he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was amid, such as his remembering his Lord all his life. So to adhere close to this, to, this, to uh, be amid all of that, that's what draws us close to the beloved. This is simply being present with him and meticulous self-awareness of his traces and tracks in your heart and in the universe. So the traces and the tracks in the heart and in the universe. Then your eye will fall on nothing and nothing will land in your ear and nothing will connect to any of your faculties except you'll have in that glance <clears throat> a divine teaching. You will learn the establishment of divine wisdom in everything. This was the state of messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, concerning what Aisha related about him that he remembered God all his life. So seeing out and looking at all of these traces, uh, this is the one that we have our eyes will fall on nothing, 
nothing will land in our ears, nothing will connect to any of our faculties, except we will have in that a glance, a divine teaching. You are the guiding, you are the true. Nothing exists apart from you. Huck, holy, subsisting, eternal, real. Laila, ha, ilahu, hai. You are the knower, you are the one. Nothing exists apart from you. Huck, boundless is mercy, fountain of light. Laila, ha, Ilahu hai, I am your garden of beautiful names. Nothing exists apart from you. Wherever I look, I see only saints. Laila, Ilahu hai. Beautiful, thank you. So the, and this from the first verse onward, we, the single soul, the single parent. So Ibn Arabi tells us about, do you see? His sallallahu alayhi wa statement is, indeed your Lord is one, just as your parent is one. And of course, we're thinking one parent, two parents. Your parent is none but the one you are based from, on. So if you recognize from who you come, you recognize your parent. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not cite our two parents, just as occurs in the physical world. Yes, we are from Adam and Eve, just as in his word, and he raised his two parents high on the throne. But just as Eve was exactly Adam, you see, she is exactly the entity of his rib. So there is only a single parent in two different images, the image of Adam, the image of, of Eve, two images, one entity. It is just as the Tajeli is, the Ein entity of Eve is the Ein of Adam a separation of the right hand from the left, while someone is still Zayd with two separate hands. So you can say, I have a right hand, I have a left hand, uh, but there's one entity. In the same way, Eve is separate from Adam, thus she is exactly Adam. So therefore there is only a single parent. So we originate from a one parent, just as the universe, all of them, originated only from a one God. So the entity is one, the correlations are many. Therefore, the entity is one, the correlations many. If the matter were not this way and only this way, being would not arise in and for us. We have a being of entity and we have a becoming of property. So being of entity and then what that property becomes in us. So just as he made us become an entity, he made us the property belong to him as a fitting recompense, if you can grasp this. Surely, who is for the sight of making the entity become? And we are to who the sight of making the Lord become? So, um, so Klaus, could you read that, that poem for us? <clears throat> If there were not the true, there would not be being. And if not for the there is, there would be no God. A share from the there is, the true had desired. A question of the questioners. By means of who and what is it? With a general population, who is not without doubt and uncertainty. But as for the special ones, who is and who is not. Yes, thank you. So thereupon multiplying births and genealogies never cease in every variety after variety of birth beings, all of them in this world, as long as the world persists and in the hereafter until no end point. And indeed, the variegation of states of the numerous births, just as they manifest in the world, in Eve, born from male, and Jesus, born from female, and the children of Adam, born from male and female. In Adam, in the Adamic realm, it is by two parents and by elements, earth and water. And in the plant, the variegation site is again in the shoots and the seeds. And it is the same way with minerals. So consider how perfectly rendered is the wisdom of God and his creation. So. 
So the entity is one, the correlations are many. Every breath is the path to a lovish life. I know and told you love it. Every breath is the path to a lovish life. I know and told Hi, hi, every soul say yes to the truth. Hello, Lord. Oh, yeah, oh, every soul is present the truth. Allah alone, beloved. The holy man, the past, the description, the weather, my need for beloved. Holy man, the past, the description, the weather, my need for. Hi, hi, hi. Clayton is diva, you need to heal our love. Who ya who the green springs and diva, you need to heal our love. On beloved, so thank you. So, this was uh, an inheritance, and when it came to Ibn Arabi, this inheritance, he wrote in the Futuhat, he wrote, the holy friends are past description and their ways are manifold. And then he wrote, every breath is a path to Allah. So he, he started with the holy friends are past description, that the, every correlation that's coming onto them and onto the universe, every uh, property and description and attribute and correlation uh, is coming without end. And you can never describe the person because they are a never ending flow of descriptions and properties and adjectives. And so they cannot be described. And so he then says later on, if, and if they can't be described, you know, how could, how could you describe what I'm saying in the Futuhat? How could you describe what I'm saying here? Because it is ever changing and ever flowing and it's never ending. And then he says, every breath is a path to Allah, uh, so that the entity is one, the correlations are many, and one step from correlation to entity. So there's only one step from correlation to entity. And so every breath is a path to Allah. There's after all, only God. Nothing other than who. And there is after all, none but two. And God is the third. The knowing which he spoke to us has given birth. So indeed I am, on account of my knowing the truth, a sower of seed. There we go. So the sower of seed, meaning his wasallam statement, who recognizes oneself, recognizes one Lord. He has recognition of the human being of itself come first, because humanity is exactly the indication. The pointing is going to be humanity. And so certainly the knowledge of the indication will come first before the knowledge of what is indicated, of what is humanity is pointing to. And the indication is us. And we are in a station of the one of a pair. This is why we are expressing the two because of the presence of the one of a pair. So the end result for us of a consideration of us is the being of the true and his oneness. So who is the third of two, just as who is the fourth of three? This is why we say God is the third for these two. And I am the sower of the seed. That is, I am the harvester for this knowledge acquired by consideration of the self in order to recognize the Lord. Oops, did we just drop? Here we go. So now uh, back to made beloved, made, made more beloved. So now we have to find out what's made more beloved. And I think, yeah, we'll talk more about this in a, in a minute, but what's made more beloved. So we have every trace you look, every track you look at, you see the lesson of the who, and you see the indication of the who. So everything is indicating the who. Now, part of his Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam inheritance is the love of women and perfume, and his eyes were soothed during the prayer. 
And when all this is in the human beings as something beloved to them, at that moment, they are inheritors. So if not, I'd be saying this is an inherited knowledge. So it's not a natural thing, it's an inherited thing. And as for one, and as for if one loves all this, but without being made to love, then one is not an inheritor. So if someone loves these uh, just by nature, then they are not an inheritor. So let's go put, it, put this in here. Um, so Ibn Arabi is telling us that all three of these are not natural loves. And so, and he says uh, when, uh, that when he, in his youth, no one disliked women more than he did. So he tells us that no one disliked women more than he did until he inherited this knowledge and then women were made beloved to him. So he's telling us that this is not a natural thing, it's an inherited thing. And if it's not natural, it means it's spirit or divine. So spirit slash divine. So the natural love is conditional love. So you like the prayer because you enjoy your, your muscles uh, bending in different ways and you love the nice place that the prayer is made. You love these beautiful mosques. And then the story is told that there were some Sufis who were racing through the air as they were wont to do. And one of them saw down below an island of green trees and, uh, and, and he just thought, wouldn't it be nice to do the prayer, the Salat there? And then after that point, he could no longer fly. And Ibn Arabi tells us, this tells us that the prayer is not for what it does naturally to you, it's for the spirit or the divine. And the same way with the perfume and smells, he tells us, he'll, and he'll tell us later on in, in the next slide about smelling things and feeling that they're, they're a beautiful smell, even though by nature, that's a repulsive or offensive smell. And then he's telling us that the, his, that women were made beloved to him while his nature was that he disliked women. So now we are into the area of this is divine or spirit-based love, what we kind of call unconditional love. And so therefore, uh, while the made beloved to me, uh, we have the model of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's a model for all of humanity. And so his, that women were made beloved to him, not by nature, but by this uh, spirit or divine process. And then he gives that knowledge uh, and as an inheritance to those who come next. Indeed, the slave, as he's a created being belonging to God and not belonging to another, just as he said, I created the jinn and the human only to worship me. So we know he created them only for his worship, which is like worship and love are then the same. And he said to Moses in the 12 words, O oh, child of Adam, I created you for my sake. The hadith continues. Thereafter, God, in the second moment, concerning you, the slave, made beloved to you some matter more than another. So we are made to worship. That is, we're made to love God. But there's a second moment when God makes the slave something is more beloved to them than some other thing. So he's saying that you, you belong to me, you worship me only, you love me only. But here in creation, there are things that I will make more beloved to you than others. So that's how we're looking at this. So there remains the discussion of who is made beloved to him, whether it is made beloved to him by instinct or in order to covetousness or cautiousness, or God made something beloved to him. You see the Prophet ﷺ said, made beloved to me. And he did not say who made them beloved to him. So it's, as it's a passive, it's a very important that the, the sentence reads was made beloved to, uh, so that the subject is, um, someone with grammar will tell me this, that the subject is, is, is hidden in the, in the passive construction. Uh, it is just as God said about the faithful, but God has made faith beloved to you. And he has made it beautiful in your hearts. And he has made hateful to you disbelief and wickedness and rebellion. So he did not turn us to the, his word made beloved and tell us what is the subject there and the opt, well, what's the subject. And he did not cite who made them beloved. He did so only because there is a meaning which could not be revealed on account of the weakness of the receiving souls to receive this. So this is a, the, the passive construction or the hiding the object uh, subject is in order to uh, keep hidden from those who cannot handle it what's being said. 
But the ones who recognize the context, they all know who is making the ones he is citing beloved to him. It is the women, the perfume, and the soothing of the eye during the prayer. You see, he would pray flush against the vision of the one who is standing there conversing intimately with him. So that in the prayer niche, there would be the one that he is speaking to. And that the one he is speaking to would take on image as Gabriel took on image before Mary during the Annunciation. Yes, in that place is the address when you say Alhamdulillah and the reply, my slave praises me and the reception to my slave is whatever he asked for. This is only in the witness of the one taking on an image because it's a place combining vision and speech. This is very important. So chapter eight is the first time we hear about the place combining vision and speech. And it's in the mythal, it's in the imaginal realm. Now as correlations involve the reciprocal leaning of the correlating to and the correlating to, so one says I'm, I'm the, the, the son of, of his father and the father is the one, the son is the son of, and the son and the father is the one, the son is a son too. So that's how they are all in, interconnected. And as for the women, and as women are a site for bringing to, into being, and the human being, Adam, involves, because a human being is flushed against the divine image, that he be a doer, so that when the Adam Eve was, was uh, uh, revealed to in Tajeli and made flush against the image, there is a doing. And necessarily the active doer must have an, a sight to affect, that has to be a, the doing and the one which receives the doing. And he desires because of his completeness that there originate from him only completeness, just as he was originally when he was complete, because he gave each thing its character creation. And this is the completeness of that thing. And there's nothing more perfectly complete than the being of the human being. Here is Adam Eve, not Adam without Eve. And that completeness is only in the woman and the ones who God made them a site for bringing into being. And the woman is a part of the man through her being affected by an effecting, the effecting which she is affected from. Therefore, he made beloved to Adam, the man, the perfect completeness of the women. And as the woman, as we cited, is exactly the rib of the man, so the sight of bringing into being whatever is brought into being is her, in her, is only himself. So his likeness does not emerge visibly from him except in his entity and his self. Now consider how strange and wondrous that matter truly is. Then anyone to whom there arrives something like this knowledge, they have surely inherited from the prophet blessings to him and peace concerning this making beloved in this facet. So to the inherited knowledge of, and there's nothing, and there is nothing more perfectly complete than the being of the human being. And that completeness is only in the women. And so this, uh, this, Completeness, which is only which is only in the women, makes the makes them beloved. It's the making beloved, and so this is what's well, so very interesting. This is the foundation, um, but it's in a foundation that's inherited. So therefore, it can't be argued for, and that's why Ibn Arabi will not. He implies it everywhere, but he argues for it never, and he says it as a straight statement only this time as an inheritance. And then perfume is based on breath, and breaths are based on Arahman. So there is no purely good name for the beings in Arahman because he is a superlative for the Rahma, which is universal. So if you are one to whom the pure goodness of each thing reaches, you perceive this perfume scent. If you perceive it as offensive to your nature, it is in fact by means of this divine epithet, something of pure goodness, and we tasted this in Mecca, then one is an inheritor truly. So in Mecca, Ibn Arabi uh, met um, a wonderful uh, muazzin, someone who gave the call to prayer in Mecca. Um, and this uh, muazzin would used to eat something, whether it's leeks or onions or something, uh, that made his breath of offensive. And then one day, Ibn Arabi says, you know, he said, well, you know, according to Sharia, that what the angels find offensive, what we find offensive, and there's something about your breath. So he tried to say it very politely, but he still said that. And the person, of course, was said, of course, then I you know, thank you for telling me that. But that night, um, 
Ibn Arabi has a dream. And in the dream, Haq comes to him and says, that person's breath to me is sweeter than musk uh, and, and it is something most beloved to me. So Ibn Arabi the next morning races over to see the muazzin, the one calling for prayer, and he tells him the dream. And the person starts crying and he says, this is wonderful, this is so beautiful. However, I will still not eat these things because of the adab of the sharia. And so what perfect adab this man had. So this is when, so this is clearly Ibn Arabi is telling us that if you can, if you can receive this as divine scent, then you are, uh, have inherited that. And it's not your nature. So if women are, are beloved, are made beloved to you, if the scent comes to you and no, no matter what your nature says about it, you love it as a scent from a Rahman, then you know that you've inherited that knowledge. Ever present, where should I search? Always aware, what should I pray? When you glance with infinite mercy, how can any separation be? We only speak to exalt your name. We only seek to express your delight. Ruined are we, annihilated we. Slain by you, we are happy to be slain. Paradise, brilliant and pure, without your face is worse than hell. A single glimpse of your true essence brings to naught every heavenly delight. When you consume a heart with your love, you scatter its ashes on the wind. What need have we for separate identity when we know you as the only truth? When there dawns a glimpse of your love, love of infinitude fades away. What drunken hearts you give to your friends, looking at themselves, they see only you. Free us from faces revealing your face, Free us from doors opening your door. If you but once call me love slave, my bliss will surpass the bliss of your throne. Your perfect mercy cancels our faults. Rings of slavehood adorn our ears. You raised us up. Before time began, we are your guests, so treat us as you will. What do I care for the play of paradise? You make my every glance paradise. When you gaze into my eyes, no duality can arise. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so we had uh, the women made beloved, perfume made beloved, and now the salat, the prayer made beloved. So the prayer was made beloved to him only because of what is in her, the combination of vision and word. This we know because of his statement, a soothing of the eye was made for me in the prayer. He did not address himself to his hearing nor to his speaking, only the eye so that the soothing of the eyes. And the soothing of the eyes we also is uh, the theme of Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun. So Asiya, uh, who, was, who raised Moses, so Musa alayhi salam. And uh, on the night journey, Moses is seen in his grave praying. So the salat is something very special for Moses, for Musa alayhi salam. And so this is 
so he is a soothing of, of the eye for Asya, and he is in the midst of a soothing of the eye in the Salat. You see, this is well known to the general population that the prayer is an intimate conversation based on his statement, the slave says this and that, so God says this and that. Indeed, the prayer is divided in half between God and his slave who is praying. This is just as it is related in the Hadith. So he said, even the general population knows this, that the prayer is a back and forth. Uh, you say something, God responds. And so, um, and then next week, inshallah, in the Fatiha, we'll see how, how Ibn Abi will say the Fatiha is the alighting place of the perfect symmetry and balance of Lord and slave. So seek and help patient and prayer, patience and prayer. And truly it is hard save for the humble-minded. So it's a kabira, it's hard, it's save for the humble-minded. And the prayer is not hard, except on the one who does not witness. So the prayer is not difficult if you see. And the one, and the one, the one who does not hear, oh boy, the true of the word responding to what the slave in the prayer spoke. Okay, I'm sorry about all that sentence. Thereupon the slave is in his stand in, in God, here's the one who praises him. So when the slave stood up and said, God, here's the one who praises him. And then the, we know that God says, God says on the tongue of his, of his slave, God, here's the one who praises him. So that was a revelation that happened in the midst of the prayer. And this is the this is a teaching based on the most complete of stations to see that the slave is speaking the revelation of the divine. So in fact, God did not honor the perfectly complete human being over the one who honored him, except with Khilafah, being able to be the one behind whom God acts. As humanity's station is tremendously honored, this is why piercing barbs land on him from whoever sends the barbs on account of the tremendous honor of the vantage position. So this is a very, a very veiled for Adab, uh, who are the ones who throw these barbs? Um, it's so Surah Al-Baqarah 230, read that and you'll know who's throwing these barbs at humanity. The one sending the barbs does not know what God has placed in the configuration of the human being. That is the perfect divine completeness. If knowledge had come in advance to this barb thrower, he would not have thrown. So now, as there is in the position of Khilafah, being a, khal a Khalifa, and she is the stand-in for the true in this alighting place, and the one praying is a stand-in in God, here's the one who praises him, which is only during the prayer. So the vantage position of the prayer is tremendously honored. So this, the, the place of the prayer, when, when the slave speaks the words of God and is responded to by God, so she was made beloved to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you see them loving the prayer according to this definition, then they are inheritors. So we're watching the, the Lord and the slave. The Lord, the slave speaks, the Lord responds. The slave speaks what the Lord is speaking, and the Lord responds. So take that with, that's the salat. And that's why it is a soothing of the eyes because you're watching the one who is making you speak. And then the scent is the scent, the breath of Ar-Rahman. So when you, when you smell that breath, you're smelling the breath of Ar-Rahman. And then Ibn Arabi is saying, and then take that to the one who is the perfectly complete, the one who is perfectly complete and no one is perfectly complete except the woman. So take the one is perfectly complete and see how the doing and the reception work. And so that is the, uh, and Ibn Arabi, as he said, for the general population, he doesn't, he, that this was not disambiguated. This was not separated so that you could say who's who. Because as we know from the poems, who's who is who is and who is not who. So we have both of those at the same time. And this, uh, this connection between the, the one who loves and the one who's beloved, the alchemy is that, that the one that you love, your beloved, uh, beco you become them. And so when, when you love what the beloved loves, then what the beloved loves is what you love. And then you begin to be identical because you love the same thing. And, you, and, that, and that 
alchemy then means that you become the beloved. And then Ibn Arabi's poems are, I am the one that I love. And so this is the this connection between lover and beloved. So, so we'll, Anna, if we can get this to work, we'll have Farida will tell us about this alchemy of love and love. <laughs> So why let's let's sit for a minute and in silence and then we can take it up from there inshallah okay 
So I just wanted to say, I think we're coming to the our, our natural end. Uh, next week, uh, we'll look at the Fatiha, inshallah. And then the Fatiha will be um, the last of these 114 chapters. And so we'll, we'll, we can come to a close then with the Fatiha next week, inshallah. So. Wonderful. Well, we have um, some great questions and comments here. Uh, let me find the first one after all the welcomes. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, okay, good. All right. Salam alaikum. Well, what, is, what is <laughs> Thank you. What is taqwa exactly? And why taqwa leads to knowledge? Which kind of knowledge are we talking about in this context? Now, um, we got a response to that. So I'll let you respond to both. Uh, taqwa is vigilance, more exactly a kind of self to be aware of God's presence. It tunes up us, it tunes, tunes us up to receive all the available knowledge in the seen and unseen realms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. From the from the the Quran, have taqwa of Allah, and Allah will teach you. So that's uh, so taqwa is that which is the mechanism by which Allah will teach you. So if I have this state of taqwa, then Allah says that Allah will be the my educator, the one who teaches me. And so uh, taqwa and ataqu, uh, these are ones that uh, often in, in in Muslim societies and languages uh, they. Uh, very wonderful understanding of it. Because in English, we're kind of stuck with God fearing and other kinds of things like that. And uh, I'll just give you an example how this taqwa might be used in different countries like Indonesia or Pakistan, places like that. If you see someone approaching a hole or a, 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 a pothole in the road and they're about to walk into it and fall, you say, ataqwa you say, have taqwa of Allah. So in other words, watch out, be aware of what's happening. So it's something to say, be aware of what's happening, watch out, you're about to fall into a hole. And then if someone is doing something which is mean, mean-spirited, and you're his friend, you'll say, have taqwa of Allah, meaning you need to know that what you're doing is mean-spirited, and you need to protect yourself by being aware that God is there watching you, and God will call you to account. So ataqwa Allah means be assured, assured that God is watching you and will call you to account. So those are some of the ranges of what taqwa is. And so in that state, you are in a state where Allah says promises to teach you. Ibn Arabi makes it very clear that following the deen and the sunnah are essential to following his path. How many people think that this is an optional extra? And if women are made beloved to the seeker, how does this apply to women seekers? Yeah, so that's the, when Ibn Arabi uses this, so the first, um, the first uh, place this is coming is in that the Prophet Sallallahu says that women were made beloved to me. When Ibn Arabi looks at it the first time, um, he looks at this and he says, this is something which is not based on nature, it's based on the divine. And it's then those who pick it up, pick it up as an inheritance. So, uh, so, and then he says for himself, that in his youth that he was, that women were the most disliked of him. So he disliked women the most of any of, I guess, of his friends. Um, and so then he inherited this knowledge. So what he's telling us very clearly is that his, that when women became uh, beloved to him, this was not in nature. In fact, it was against his nature. Um, so therefore we can know that Ibn Arabi is telling us that this was a divine uh, inheritance, that was inherited a divine wisdom. And then when he speaks about this, um, about Eve as, and this, the completeness, the perfect completeness of humanity is found only in Eve, in the woman, uh, he's then telling us that we are now also shifting not only away from nature, we're sh shifting away from society's conventional statements of this is a woman, this is a man. So we're, we're, we've left that, and Ibn Arabi then in that poem, we've, we've looked at that twice when, uh, and it's so interesting, Salah was telling me that in Yemen, this, a line from this poem is used to sort of, uh, you know, to blast Ibn Arabi and tell people why they should hate Ibn Arabi, uh, why men should hate him, because Ibn Arabi says, thank God there are no men. 
And so, and what he's saying by this is that, thank God, there are no men who are biologically unable to receive uh, what Allah is sending to them. And so, uh, and we know that the greatest of, of humanity then are the ones who are then the brides of God. The, so this, and their orders is their, is their wedding banquet when they die. And so uh, Ibn Arabi is leading us to see that we're, we're talking about something that happens, a divine wisdom of, uh, of how things are created and who does and who receives and how the doing and the receiving works. And so it's, uh, it's, it's past, um, it's past, you know, uh, biology, you know, sex, sex and biology, and, uh, and then it, it gets into gender, but then it gets into a very unusual different ones. And so this is, you know, in a sense, the way Ibn Arabi does that, he has, he has adab, he has courtesy for all of these things that have to be said. And one of the um, reasons that he says about you know, that is found perfectly complete is found only in the woman. Uh, he's saying that very lightly so that the men who are listening um, can be healed to know that they're, 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 they as men, if they want to be defined as, as men, then that what they will have to do to, to earn that is to be the one who only gives what the divine wants them to give. So they act only as the divine wants them to act. And Ibn Arabi said in that one passage, then if they don't, and Ibn Arabi sort of counsels and uh, tells men, if you don't act as, as she, as the huwiyat, as the inaccessible Aziza, as she wants you to act, then she will not look at you. And that will be, that will be your greatest wound is that you are not looked at. So these are the ways that uh, he uses all of these uh, uh, these these nuances and the grammatical uh, genders and 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 uh, and, he, and he uses that in order for us to see these insights and these insights are in a sense embodied so he has to so he points to them as a not as abstract but as embodied and they're embodied in this make made beloved to me they are embodied not through nature but through a divine wisdom. Wonderful. Taqwa is such a profound term with variegated meanings and worth spending more time on. Perhaps this can be a focus of one of, of Shuaib's lectures. Mm -hmm. There is fairly in-depth discussion on Taqwa in the study Quran, so would add that as a reference point. Yes, good. Yeah, and, and it's just such a struggle to figure out how to translate all of that into, into one word or even to a clause. So thank you. Yes, yeah, study Quran will, will help here. Can you please explain again about the letter Ein of Eve and of Adam? So, okay, so this Ein is the entity uh, Ein, so the source or the point or the 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 entity. Um, and so, when he's when he's talking about the Ein of Eve and the Ein of of Adam, he's talking about this source, this entity. And so he's saying the source and the entity, the Ein is one, and then there's the left hand and the right hand, and there's the this and the and there's the that, and there's the Adam and then there's the Eve. But that the Adam Eve is the entity, is the is the source, is the Ein. And so Ein is also like a spring or a well that the, the water gushes up from there. And so we gush up from the Adam Eve. Um, so we gush up from the single one parent just as everything gushes up from the single one God. Salams, is the female completeness an earthly slash innate oops, station while the soul is genderless? So uh, the, what Ibn Arabi does with, the, with, the, with Mother Earth, that he gender, he says that the, that, that one is, that, that the mother, that, that she is there, um, there's a, that we are living in a body, which is also a she, and then we also have a, uh, a, sp a spirit, an articulate spirit, which then he gives the he. And so, the, and so this coming together, that we are told to do things, we are given sharia and, and tasking, uh, as only as long as our articulate soul is in our uh, the feminine body. So that, that the masculine soul is in the feminine body, and then when they when they're separating, because our body is in the earth, is in Mother Earth after in our, in the graves, that allows us to always be in a state of worship because worship 
comes from being with the inside earth, which earth herself is the form of worship and love. And that's why Ibn Arabi says he does, unless we were told that the angels always are worshiping, we would not understand how that could be because they are made from light and light is very exalted and goes up and is and it does its own thing, whereas earth um, is the automatic uh, worshiper. And so, be, and so the grace of God is that we are all made in Mother Earth and from Mother Earth. And then when we die, we stay in Mother Earth so that we are always uh, fixed and anchored in worship. And then our soul, as in a dream, then can go to different places. But if we did not have the base, our, our body in the earth, or, or sleeping on the bed, then we would not be able to travel in the dream and then after death as well made beloved to me out of this your world dunya is there are there other places one could inherit as well aha uh -huh. does it where else the inheritance outside this world um i'm not sure i think that there's a that inheritance is a special thing for dunya because you only inherit when someone dies and so you need to have the the, the being alive and then passing away and then giving that an inheritance. Now the inheritance then is 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 moves and is transmitted through lineage through from from one to another. So people inherit from the inheritors, and so we are inheritors of inheritors of inheritors of the prophets, um, and so that's that's a lineage, um, and I suppose those truths then move on uh, past the dunya. Um, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, I would think those truths move on past the dunya, but the kind of inheritance of, uh, that I'm, uh, that's required by someone passing away and then giving you uh, the wealth that they acquire, the knowledge that they acquired, that's something that's, that has a very uh, world-based uh, aspect to it or quality to it. I started joining these sessions very late, so I've been going through these sessions from the beginning chronologically on YouTube. Can you please frame why the sessions are coming to a natural end next week as planned? Yeah, okay, good, good. Yeah, I was just uh, talking with uh, Klaus about this. Um, so we started uh, 2020 somewhere in end of March and um, and that was, and we and there was a very natural uh, ceiling moment uh, in December. So that was nine months. And so uh, that was evocative as well. So nine months uh, gave birth in December to the seal and the ceiling. Uh, you know, I was learning all about what Ibn Arabi is talking about sealing. So we talked about the prophet is the seal of the prophets. And then we talked about Ibn Arabi as the seal of the saints and what the sealing means. And, and just I had no idea before. I thought sealing was sort of you put something over it and it's closed and that's the end of it. And he says, no, sealing is when you put the seed inside the ground and you put the moist earth, the soil around the seed, and then the seed grows. That's what's called seal. And then when you look at all the people that he, as the seal of the saints, gave this to, uh, most of them, they're, they're, they're girls, women, uh, freed slaves, and just and then and the only person who sort of was uh, sort of respected in society would have been his son-in-law, Sadat bin Klanawi. Everyone else was sort of like on the outside, and those are the ones that that he gave this to. And so the seal is not closed and it's over; it's it's protected and guarded so that it can grow. So we got to there in December, and then in 2021 we picked up the 114 chapters, which are the backpedaling of the reading the Quran backwards or backpedaling. And so we started with Surah Nas 114, and then next week, inshallah, one Fatiha. And so this is called backpedaling. And Ibn Arabi says that this is how, uh, when, when, he, when he draws the picture of the circumference and the point, the center point, he says that all these things come from the circumference back to the point. So they come from what we think of as the end and they come back to what we think of as the beginning. So they end with the beginning, they start with the end. And so the Fatiha then is coming back to source, coming back to the center point. And so that's, and that's been now what, six, six months or uh, so, it's, so it's interesting, we're getting all of this together. Um, one more question, 
just for Gertie, the sessions are not ending, right? From here, we move into another subject. <laughs> well, not, we we not, not sure what's next because uh, you know, not sure what's next because the, see, as I explained, that the nine month and the six months <laughs> come together. So the first the first nine months were also were topical. So we were trying what I was thinking of. What do I need to know? What have I learned in order to understand Ibn Arabi? So all these are all the things that I needed to learn before I could say this is what Ibn Arabi is talking about. And then with that sort of that comprehensive, this is what we need to know. And this is how he is the seal of all of that, because what, what he does is that Ibn Arabi looks at every single thing that's articulate and he has to show how there is mercy behind it, that everything is merciful, that everything is rahma. And so he has to look at all of the legal issues and all of the psychological issues and virtues. And he looks at contracts and he looks at every single topic, cosmology and ritual and all of these topics. And he said he shows where the Rahma is in all of that. And so that came to a, a nice close in December 2020. And then we began with the this backpedaling through the Quran. So. I don't see what's next, but we'll, we'll just have to, if you see what's next, let me know. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Shuaib. There aren't any more questions. Um, another wonderful session and great questions and comments. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and go ahead and if you would like to see the PDF, people are putting their, their emails up and so I can, I can send from there. And uh, yeah, so yeah, we, we just, we'll have to see what, what's happening. I see Hamid here. Uh, we're doing, um, we have on Monday, uh, we've, Atif Khalil has organized a close reading of Futuhat. And so, um, so if, if, if that's something that might interest you, put your, your email on there. We can, we can invite more people. We're reading uh, right now, Vast Earth. We're reading chapter 355, and we have a few more paragraphs to go. And this is where Ibn Arabi says, so your body is the vast earth. And so, and it's just, it's just absolutely beautiful because it shows the honoring of the body, honoring of Mother Earth, and uh, why we are so uh, grateful that we are Earth bodies, um, mm -hmm. and, that, and that we are in body, we are in, in bodies, and that we are always in bodies. And so, as we're, what, whatever happens to us, we always have one particle in Mother Earth, and that being in Mother Earth, in the lap of Mother Earth, will then anchor us so that all of our adventures and journeys and travels uh, in the hereafter are anchored by we are in Mother Earth. And so that we never leave that. And so Ibn Arabi has that beautiful passage where he says, we have not fully given the honor that is due to Mother Earth. It's just a beautiful uh, passage. And that's why he says that when the people who know, when they're born, they turn around you know, at, at one, 10 minutes later, they turn around and they look at their mother and they learn from their mother. And that's what it is. And it's a, you, we learn from Mother Earth. And that is our, the first teacher. And that's our, the one that has put us in her lap to hold us and take us wherever we are going to go. So this is how we make our journey is that we have this mother. So Alhamdulillah. But there is one more question. More from, question from yes. uh, Said Ahmad. Okay. Would you like to unmute yourself? Great. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me, Doctor? Yes. So um, it was difficult to type, so I will speak it. So in the first um, audio session that I could hear, you said that there's a reason, and this knowledge needs to be brought forth. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why, but I feel I need to stay connected somehow. Um, and my I, leaning was to crowdsource sharing of knowledge, make a system. If there's any work that needs to be done on the Futuhat project website, I would love to stay in the loop on that. So please, um, if you have any needs, if you can share in some way what you need, maybe we could contribute in some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah, I, I think that's wonderful. Um, that I, there will, I think there needs to be something. Uh, what the form will be, but we, there needs to be this maintaining this connection. And, uh, and I've learned over the years, uh, just so valuable to, to be able to see how this, this work is supported um, and that people, you know, step up and do these things. And, 
and it's just it's just absolutely crucial and so and so thank you um so we will we will try to stay in touch with that inshallah because uh you know uh, Sheikh has always told me that you know there's the translation but when you're done the translation there's still something that has to be done and I think what we've seen it what has to be done um, is this conveying and the conveying is something that takes place all the time and it's never because this is not a philosophical system that you know oh if you learn this you're done uh, it's it's an ongoing it's it's diving into the source and then more than that the 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 knowledge and the authority is in the community and so Ibn Arabi says that in this mother community everyone who recites the Quran recites it new it's the new Quran that they are reciting and so he has said that it is the mother community that holds this um and so that with the, when the, the Nur Muhammad Sallallahu was invisible at first, became body with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then became invisible again, and then will become visible on the last day. So this invisible third part is also the third part of the night. And so the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was the Quran, he is the Quran, and his mother community then is the Quran. So when we recite Quran, it's new and it's being recited at, from humanity, which is from Muhammad, which is from the Ummah, which is the mother community. And so that's also where the mother comes from, the Umm, and he was Ummiya, meaning he was as he came from his mother. So Ummiya, the Nabi and Ummiya is the one who came as he comes from his mother. And then Ummiya also means based on his mother. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, inshallah, we'll be able to keep uh, like the email contact list, uh, we can we can sort of refine that to those who would like to know what's happening, uh, you know, monthly or, or whatever, and uh, we'll we'll see what's we'll see what's next. But inshallah, next week we uh, that we can have our our last supper. <laughs> we can have the fun. Thank you. <laughs> and it's so funny. I was just realizing that you know that also that these that Muslim societies have inherited so much of these things, and one of the things they've inherited as when I was entering into this and, and learning about that the Fatiha is a closer. And so, because I always thought Fatiha opens and you begin things with Fatiha. And people would say, when I was over there, people would say, oh, look at my car. It's really having trouble. Let's just say Fatiha and let it go. <laughs> so, so Fatiha is what you do when things are over. So I said, oh, that's kind of strange. But actually, that is the wisdom. It is an opener and a closer. <laughs> so, uh, so let's uh, connect again uh, next week. And maybe we'll have thought about a way that we could have a refined uh, email list of people who want to see what's happening with the Futahat project. And, uh, and of course, let me just show you. This is the first one, volume three. Absolutely beautiful came out. So, <laughs> so enjoy this one. And people are already receiving it. So it's it's really, it's really wonderful. So Alhamdulillah.